Hey guys, Ryan aka Bloodshot Airbrushing. Welcome back to the studio, beginners, my warriors in training. Alright guys, today we're going to do some troubleshooting. Alright, last episode, episode 1, we talked about the equipment. I hope you guys have some. And now we're going to get into ah, spraying some paint through that equipment. Alright guys, so all you need today is uh, a sketch pad. Um, I recommend going out and getting one. Get a cheap one. Don't get an expensive one or whatever. Get an expensive one. I don't care. Get whatever you want. Um, this is no longer a sketch pad. This, which was gifted to me this year by the jolly Saint Nick himself, I'm giving to you guys. All right. This is no longer your everyday sketch pad. This is our airbrushing journal. All right, guys. And that cover needs something, doesn't it? All right, guys. So let's uh, let's hit the comments. What do you think? What should we airbrush on the cover of our airbrushing journal? Um, this is gonna be a mess by the time we're done with it, but it's gonna it's gonna chart your progress, guys. And it's always nice to look back at where you came from to see how far you've gone. All right, guys. So we're gonna flip this bad boy open. We're gonna get some paint, and we're gonna start to pua. Slapping it down on some paper. Check it out. All right, guys, set yourself up nicely. Uh, I recommend getting something that you can uh, prop your book up against. All right, guys, now for the most part, I use two different types of paint. All right, I've got my Auto Air, which is an opaque paint and I've got my FW which is actually a transparent ink. Um, I'm going to go for the transparent ink today um, just because it's going to be easier to show you some of the common issues that you have when you first pick up an airbrush. Alright guys, one of the common issues that you're going to have is you're going to get on your paper and you go, oh, yep, yeah. ah, too much paint. If you look, I can start adding air and I just push that all right, so this is what is called skating. Okay, guys, when you get too much paint and it starts going all over the place. Um, common issue, the issue is too much paint. You are applying too much paint onto a surface. If I want to build that up and I want to build up a nice dark circle, if I apply it slower, allowing that paint to dry less likely to skate all over the place. And I got that pretty wet, and all I'm doing now is drying it. I couldn't push that anywhere even if I tried. All right guys, so skating is something where you're just applying too much paint, your paint is too wet. Um, if you try to thicken up your paint too, so this is an ink, I'm going straight out of the, I didn't thin it out, straight out of the bottle. Um, with some of these thicker paints, you'll probably find it hard to skate unless you have it too thin. So you can always add more paint to thicken it up. Uh, thin it out, thicken it up. This is one thing that you're gonna find. Uh, dot patterns when you have thicker paint. Uh, we'll get into that, we'll get into that shortly guys. Um, bleeding is another common problem where you've grabbed some tape and you've painted your area white or your area is white prior and now you're masking off a line and you're painting some paint and oh man you got that paint so wet that oh well paper doesn't work so great <laughs> we're learning we're learning together guys um it did start to push over but then it just all got ripped up underneath all right we'll use a stencil instead so again your paint gets too wet and it bleeds underneath your line. That's another common issue. I'm glad we grabbed the stencil. You've got your stencil too wet. Now you go to lay it down, spray your line, and you pick it up and you're like, oh, what the? That's because your stencil is too wet. So what you can do is you can actually just air, dry it out. Uh, you should always have some crumpled up paper towel near you. You can always dry it out that way. Test it on a piece of paper first, 
and then go back to spraying. But you apply nice light passes multiple times, allowing that paint to actually dry as it's being applied before the next layer hits it. And I can get that pretty dark, guys. And I can even spray towards my edge, which is a no-no in the airbrushing world. Typically, you want to spray away from your edge. And this is why, guys. <laughs> Spraying towards your edge will push your paint underneath your stencil time and time again. Oh, can't use that, can we? Flip her over. Let's go to the other side, guys. Let's try this one last time. All right, slow, multiple. Gonna build up nice and dark. And we got a pretty solid line. Alright guys, so there's a couple common issues that you can run into working with a stencil. Um, my brush is starting to get some paint build up. So I'm just going to... Uh, and for the sake of speed guys, I am actually letting myself get covered in paint. And I do consider this covered and I'm OCD so this is actually kind of driving me a little crazy right now. Um, another tip, clean your hands, dude. Um, you're messing with paints all the time. Last thing you want to do is go on your bright white piece or even worse, sign your customer's project with a nice blue thumbprint. Um, so I recommend, you know, you get paint on your hands, clean it right away, guys. Don't even let it sit. Uh, I'm going to blast out the last of that blue. I'm going to get black. Only because it's uh, one of the thicker, more opaque colors that you can put in a brush. And I'm going to show you a dot pattern and why I kind of don't like using black for blends. I really prefer my blue, purple, brown mixture to black. Um, I, again, so this is the more opaque. So. I don't know if you guys can see that, I'll bring it up close here. But I'm getting more of a dot pattern. I don't know if you're really seeing that. So it does make it hard to do nice blends. at the nice fade I've gotten there and it's just it's just grainy like I say it just doesn't have the same blending power because the paint is so thick um a little trick guys if I'm spraying big areas sometimes that trigger just doesn't give me quite enough paint I want to spray a big area I don't want to be sitting here all day so what I'll do is I'll actually grab onto my needle now that I don't have my back housing and I'll pull that needle by the needle chuck, pull it out and I get a lot more paint coming through my brush. I'll also do that when I'm cleaning. I'll go and I get any chunkies that have built up inside, spits them out. All right guys, I'm just gonna thin out this black a bit and then I'll kind of show you, even once it's thinned out, we still have that dot pattern. All right guys, grab my brush. So I thinned it out considerably, over half, over half. And if anything, the dot pattern has actually gotten worse. I don't know, that's just, just what happens with the opaque colors. They, they're not the best for blending. This is why I run two types of paint. I run the uh, Auto Air for coverage power, and I run the FW inks for blends. And mix them both, man. They're both acrylics. 
so I can mix each. And then for cleaning guys, I just throw some cleaner, swoosh it around, use a paintbrush, usually an old beat up paintbrush that I don't use anymore for actual paint brushing. Swoosh it around, I got a trash can I just chuck it into. I use paper towel, kind of clean the whole thing inside and out. And she'll set for the eve. Um, when I'm not using it, I do like to leave some cleaner fluid in there. Um, just so that if there is some paint that doesn't dry out. If you have any questions guys, throw it down in the comments and uh, we'll get back to you. Hey, where'd you come from? Ah. Quit staring at me. Alright guys. Airbrushing tips for beginners. I hope your 20 hours started today, guys. I hope your notepad looks something like this, guys. Uh, remember, all these little mistakes that I'm showing you today. We learn more from our failures than we'll ever learn from our successes, guys. When it's easy, it's a quick pat on the back, man. When it's hard, man, you really struggle through something and you make it, you get across that gap, you make it across that bridge, you succeed. Those are the lessons that stick with you, that are unforgettable, that change you, that make you who you are, guys. So I hope your notepad has pages, pages of this, guys. Um, all right, get started. Start making your mistakes. Learn your airbrush. Start building some muscle memory. Learn how to hold that thing. Learn how to pull that trigger. Learn how to aim that gun. All right, guys, uh, next one, we're going to do some more spraying. So we'll get a little bit more into the whole aspect of uh, controlling this brush, this new tool that we've uh, undertook. All right, guys, thanks a lot for coming along. Thanks for accepting the challenge. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about right now, thanks for picking up an airbrush and giving it your all. I don't care if you're doing it because I asked you to. I don't care if you've had the thought to do it for numerous days. I don't, if you just found me online and now you're like, whoa, who's this cat with the weird stash? <laughs> All right, guys, do it. I'm glad you're doing it. Um, we'll get back at her. This notepad, this, this airbrushing journal is going to be full. As always, thanks for dropping into the studio. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for being part of the adventure. Cheers. Stay tuned for volume three where we touch on some airbrushing techniques. In the meantime, guys, keep slinging that paint and learning from those mistakes. All right, guys, and if you got any questions or if there's anything you think I missed, hit me up in the comments, guys. And as always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride.